I am proud to report the Department of Ecology gave approval for the state's first watershed management plan, and it's right here in Thurston County. Stay tuned for this month's two-part episode of Thurston County Connection. This Nisqually Watershed Planning Group was led by the Nisqually Tribe, but involved major efforts from Thurston County planning staff, local municipalities, and other key stakeholders. Today, I'm headed to the Chehalis Basin Partnership Meeting, where the county senior planner will be talking about the Nisqually Watershed Plan and how the group was successful in getting the plan approved. Let's go hear what she has to say. Good morning, everyone. I'm Allison Osterberg. I'm a senior planner with Thurston County. I always travel with a camera crew, so thank you for welcoming them. Um, uh, thank you for having, thank you so much to uh, the Shale Space and Partnership for inviting me here today. Um, and I will be speaking on the uh, Stream Flow Restoration Act Watershed Plan Amendment for the Nisqually Watershed. Um, success. We did it, and lessons learned from that process now that you in the Chehalis Space and Partnership and others are starting. Uh, and I'm here up because they invited me. I definitely didn't do this work alone. There were a lot of people who were involved, some of whom are in this room, uh, and I'll be shouting out to them as well. So um, Thursday County, we, we, all our watersheds look like this, right? We don't know what happens beyond those Borders, but we've got five watersheds uh, that are um, going through this watershed planning effort. I'll mostly today be talking about Nisqually, um, which besides Thurston County also involved Pierce County and Lewis County. And the deadline for that plan was that it needed to be approved by Ecology on February 1st. By February 1st, if we were uh, turning it in at 1201, February 2nd, we would go to rulemaking is what we were told. Um, and we asked, <laughs> and then uh, we're here in Chehalis 22 and 23, which has a deadline of February 1st, 2021. And then we're also involved in um, Raya 13 and Raya 14, the Deschutes and Kennedy Goldsboro, which are ecology run processes that are um, where those plans are due June 30th of 2021. Raya 11 planning unit members, the lead on this effort was the Nisqually Indian Tribe. It involved uh, Thurston, Pierce, and Lewis County, but there were a number of other participants, the cities of Lacey, uh, Yelm, and Olympia, town of Eatonville, the Thurston PUD uh, was a huge help, WDFW, Department of Agriculture, and the Nisqually River Council Citizens Advisory Committee. And ecology also was a huge help throughout this process. Uh, one thing to that, that I'll hit on is that um, it was a real team effort and no one uh, liked the way that the legislation was written. No one likes being put in this box to have to do these things on this kind of deadline, but um, we were all united in trying to get this work done. So in about seven months, um, so, we had, so in about, we had about seven months when we finally got going to do what uh, everyone else will have uh, two and a half three years to do. So how did, in seven months did we go from zero to approved? Um, and this is a photo from the day we delivered the plan to Maya Bellin at the Department of Ecology. So what the watershed groups and this one included, and this the Chehalis is similar to the Nisqually in that you have an existing watershed plan and you're looking to do an amendment or an addendum to it. Uh, and Nisqually was in the same same situation, they, had a, they have a plan, they had an existing group that was, had continued to meet and they needed to just um, amend their existing plan. But you have to develop a plan that describes, calculates future water use, come up with a list of offset actions of different kinds and A plus B 
needs to result in C net ecological benefit. And um, there's a lot of math involved. That was one of my lessons learned. Math. Uh, the guy we were operating under interim guidance from ecology that came out in June of last year. And uh, just summarizing that, what they say we needed to do was to characterize and quantify the potential impacts to in-stream resources from the proposed 20 years of new domestic permit exempt water use at a scale that allows meaningful determinations of whether the proposed offsets will be in time and or in the same subbasin. So some of the main things that, that were highlighted from there is that we had to have suitably sized basins. Um, and if available, we needed to show the timing of impacts and the proportion of flow impacted. So step one, um, so how do we get there? Many steps. Step one, define appropriate subbasins. Uh, in Nisqually, we came up relatively quickly with eight subbasins. And this is one thing that I think was a uh, thing that we were very successful. We didn't spend a lot of time arguing about how to lump or split. We made some really quick decisions early on that said, we're, yes, so uh, um, these subbasins are not um, surface water subbasins and groundwater basins are, they're different. Um, we made some things just for administrative ease because uh, we have the Nisqually River separates Thurston County and Pierce County to make it easier. We're gonna keep, keep them separate in that sense. We're gonna lump a bunch of them together uh, from the prairie tributaries into one. Uh, we did some other lumping and we, we came to that decision relatively easy. The, your subbasin boundaries are really important. They're gonna determine a lot of how things are looked at in the future and they need to be set up front because you don't want to have to go back and do your calculations again if you're down the road questioning well actually these two things should be different or actually the actions that are in them are pretty similar um, one thing we looked at with the prairie tributaries there's a bunch of different tributaries but the geology is very similar and so the activities you would do in there we thought would be similar we checked that with ecology that that would be okay for us to do it that way and ecology said yes they looked at it they thought about it and um, we had that uh, that back and forth and that helped us really move forward. So set your sub-basins. Step two, estimate 20 years of population growth. In Thurston County, we're extremely fortunate to have the technical resources of Thurston Regional Planning Council. They do annual population estimates from us. They take the numbers from the state, from OFM, and they can um, geographically break them down for us into smaller pieces and say, here's where growth is likely to be happening in Thurston County over a wide area. Not all counties have this resource. Um, this is something that in uh, this watershed, and I know the different counties have different, different resources, but this was a huge benefit to us. The time period that we set on, uh, we're required to do 20 years of projected growth. We made, again, we made an upfront determination we're going to go out to 2040, which is actually 22 years, uh, because Nisqually just loves being an overachiever. Uh, they also, it just, it matched up really well with our comprehensive plan. That was the way we're, we're forecasting growth in our comprehensive plan to 2040 already. And so that was, um, was nice to have that round number. I would note that each county may have its own method for generating population growth. They may have their own way of doing that. It's okay, that's fine. You don't have to, the, down the road you need to come together with some similar ways, but you can take different routes to get there. Pierce County, Lewis County, and Thurston County each had a slightly different methodology for doing population growth. Pierce County is part of the Puget Sound um, Regional Council. It's a big, complicated, I don't even get into PSRC, but they had their own way that they had to do things. Lewis had their own way that they, that they do things. And we have their, our own way of doing things. That's okay. You got to find a way to come down, down the line to a number that you can uh, uh, reference together, but there might be different, different paths to getting there. Uh, when we did that, and uh, I'm just showed the, for the subbasins, this is just for Thurston County. Uh, when we looked at population, what we saw is for the, um, Thurston County side as a whole, about 30,000 more people over that 20 year planning period in Thurston County and the Nisqually watershed. And then uh, TRPC, we're so grateful they can also break that down into dwelling units. They have a model, a formula that they, they do that. And we could break it out not just by subbasin, but about how many of these dwelling units are in the rural areas, how many of them are in an urban growth area, um, how many of them are in a city boundary. 
And so that, that was really important. So about 12,000 new dwelling units. So just a quick thing that I'd highlight here, um, the largest proportion for us of our growth and in the watershed as a whole is in the city of Yelm. And the second largest are in the UGAs. And, and that's great, right? That's growth management at work. Most of your growth is happening in the urban areas. Growth management for the win, that's great. Um, that's what we like to see. But for this process, we're mostly interested in where is the rural growth happening? How much rural growth is happening? That's the type of development that's likely to end up on a permit exempt well. Um, and for us, we were able to break that out by subbasin as well. So it's great that you get a number of homes, but how do you turn, homes are not what we want to um, calculate as part of this process. We need to know what the number of permit exempt connections are going to be. So I, I feel like some people say this is the big challenge for counties to get to this number. This is not the, this is really, this is part of the challenge. But the challenge is to take the, that and turn it into well connections. That's, for the most part, counties are, are pretty used to coming up with population projections. We're not used to saying how many of those will end up on permit exempt wells. That's, that was a new thing that we had to do. So you gotta think about things that development is different in your urban areas and your rural areas. In urban areas, can you assume that all new units will be served by a public water system? Uh, some places can do that. If you have a, water, a municipal water system and it can serve your entire urban growth area and your city, and that's typically what it does, you might make the, you might make the call and say it's going to be on a public water system. They won't be on new permit exempt wells. We don't have to look at the urban growth. In Thurston County, we could not make that assumption. We knew from past development that that's not how it was happening in some of our urban growth areas. So what we did do is calculate based on our uh, records of past development, what is the proportion of growth that's been happening in the past that's relying on permanent exempt wells in an urban growth area? And um, we couldn't do it this way, just the way our records were, but it's helpful if you, if you have that number easily, you can, if you can query it by date. It would have been nice if we could have gone back and said, in the past 10 years or in the past five years, what proportion of growth has been there. We couldn't do that, but some, some people may be able to. And that was important because you know how I mentioned that Yelm, the Yelm areas where we were seeing that biggest growth for Nisqually, it's also 70% of the growth in the Yelm UGA was, has been occurring on permit exempt wells. So it's, that's a lot of the growth and a lot of it's in that area, that subbasin. In rural areas, you could um, take that same approach. This is actually what uh, the way that Pierce County approached it. You can calculate, again, look at your record of past development and, and how many of those typically are relying on permanent exempt wells and then project that going forward. Um, that was one method. Uh, another method, and this is what we ended up using for Thurston County, is that we assumed we wanted to look at where there were other um, public water systems. And this is where we looked a lot at the PUD and at the information about the Group A and Group B water systems that are out there. And so what then we had to look at is how many water systems do we have and what capacity do they have to serve new development coming online with the assumption that um, that maybe we wouldn't have so many new ones coming online as we did in the past and that the ones who were there would be able to serve new development. And those two methods you know, resulted in slightly different approaches. Um, and then when we put all that together, urban connection projected uh, new permit exempt connections in the urban areas and in the rural areas. And we rolled together our methodology Lewis County's methodology, Pierce County's methodology, we came up to an estimate of just about 3,000 new permit exempt connections in the Nisqually watershed forecast over 20 years. Um, and of that, about a third of it is in the Yelm UGA. So that helped us when we got to think about actions because we're like, that's a big area where we have a need. Um, but, you know, two thirds of it then were in the rural area. So that kind of got us to that first step, calculating consumptive water use. Uh, that's the next step. So it, then you have the number of connections, which is your universal. You can take different paths to get there, but get to a number of connections to permit exempt wells. 
and then take that number, and I think Tom Culhane might, might talk a little bit more about this later, but uh, in Nisqually, we, it wasn't good enough for us to turn that into consumptive water use one time. We, did it, we tried it three different ways, because we were into trying different things. So we um, had three different methods for calculating the amount of water use that that would result in. And the first way that we tried was looking at um, actual consumptive use. We used information from the Thurston PUD, their network, of, and, and looked at what uh, people in Thurston County using water systems in the rural area are typically using. Uh, and then we said, okay, but people who are on permit exempt wells are probably going to be, you know, they don't have a rate system, they may be using more. So we doubled that for safety and said, that's going to be, that's what we called our actual consumptive method. That was important to the counties um, that our information on consumptive use be based on real data that was local relevant data. It was recent, it was for our area, it wasn't based on some kind of factor in Eastern Washington or the East Coast or something like that. It was our data recently from our area. And so then I'll just talk, about, so this was basically what we turned into ecology. We said, we, we've got your water use, we got a bunch of actions that are gonna result in some things over here. Uh, and they, bless their hearts, tried to make sense of that plan and try to understand what is meant by net ecological benefit. And I really, I have to hand it to the Department of Ecology staff. This was a really hard charge for them to do. Um, but I do wanna have a couple of reflections on the way that they uh, did this work because I think it has some um, relevance for going forward to think about how to set up our plans. One thing that, that they make clear in judging the plan for net ecological benefit is that everyone else will be different. Um, we complained through this whole process about how fast it was and ecology also acknowledged it's very fat. They didn't have much time to do this. Uh, other, we're operating under interim standards for net, or, net ecological benefit. I think the permanent regulations are planned to come out later this year. Most of the other, all the other watershed plans will be judged under slightly different standards. And so we were granted a fair amount of leeway because we were coming up with everything for the first time. Everyone else will be different and all our watersheds are really different. So it is going to be very different. Um, one of the takeaways is that if you don't quantify it, it doesn't count. We don't have, we had a lot of really great conceptual ideas that we put into our plan, uh, how we might do things different with our permitting system, types of restoration we could do, how we could do wells differently. We, you know, we ran out of time to quantify them in terms of stream flow or acre feet per year. And so they're in the plan as a narrative, but when they're doing that ecological benefit, they couldn't tab it, ta you know, tally it. And so those didn't get counted. The reviewers who are doing the plan, um, they favor the familiar. We all do this. There were different, uh, we had a lot of creative kind of new ways of thinking about bringing together water and salmon recovery and flood management and these different things. People who work in these disciplines, they speak different languages. Um, and the reviewers who are reviewing it have been very steeped in water resources and water rights issues. And they're very familiar with certain types of projects. Um, and so we got, there was a lot of discussion about the uncertainty of different types of projects. All projects are uncertain. Buying a water right is uncertain. You know, is somebody actually going, you can say, I think there might be a water right here. It's uncertain whether someone would want to sell it, whether they've been actively using it. That's, there's uncertainty with that. There's uncertainty with, remand, with remeandering a stream and knowing if it's going to add capacity to a stream. There's a lot of uncertainty in all these projects. But the reviewers are more familiar with, the, with some types of projects. And so those ones were kind of said, these are more certain projects. They got put in a higher tier was the way they looked at it. Um, and one thing that we did well and that was important but that i think we could do better and more of is we have to really show the connection to your salmon strategy uh, we did a lot of work uh, with tying in the salmon recovery folks and the projects that we did a lot of them came from the four-year work plan and then had to be kind of reconstituted in a way that would um, 
could be described a little bit more in water terms, but that's where they came from. And so sometimes when the reviewers like, we don't really get this project, but we see it was a top priority on their habitat work program. And so we think it's important. We think that they think that it's important. So we're going to, we're going to believe them. You have, that's an, that's an important, we're trying to get it net ecological benefit. A lot of that ties back to salmon. And if you can bring in that salmon strategy and show those connections and, and um, with more time, we can maybe do that more. The Nisqually Watershed Planning Group was put under a tremendous time constraint and met the state mandated deadline. Key elements of this plan include use of reclaimed water, expansion of managed forestry, ditch removals and beaver introduction, aquifer storage and recovery, and stormwater reinfiltration. On part two of this series, I'll be speaking with the Natural Resources Director for the Nisqually Indian Tribe and the county's hydrologist to talk more in depth about the Nisqually Watershed Plan and what it means for you. Thanks for tuning in to Thurston County Connection on Thurston Community Media. To learn more about the Nisqually Watershed Management Plan, visit the link below. For more programming like this, visit the county's YouTube channel or tune in to Comcast Channel 3.